Hmm, what happened? There we go. So, how do we measure stresses? We already talked about integration of density logs. That's the, the best way to measure vertical stress. So, I mean, we actually drill a hole, gather density log information, and then integrate it. So, S3, which is SH min, except, you know, it's, it's SH min in normal faulting and, stri and strike slip faulting, right? So, in those two scenarios, it can be obtained from many fracks, right? So, these are, you know, again, what, what we said that if the pore pressure exceeds the minimum stress, then you're going to hydraulically fracture the rock. So if, you know, another way to say that is if you've hydraulically fractured the rock, you've, you've exceeded the minimum stress. And the minimum stress, you know, S3 is SH min, except for the reverse fault scenario. And so what we can do is we can actually diagnostically fracture the rock. So not from a stimulation standpoint, not, not to get the well to produce, because at this point we're still <coughs> drilling the well, possibly and trying to understand the stress state. And so we do something called mini frac or DFIT, diagnostic fracture injection test. We intentionally create small fractures in the rock to probe it for SH min. Okay. We're going to talk about that in a little more detail. It's in chapter six and go back to it. The pore pressure can be measured directly. Uh, while drilling or estimated from geophysical logs or seismic data, <clears throat> we can bound SH max with the frictional strength of the crust. So we're, again, what we're saying is we, we're assuming we know SH min in some way, or S3. And in that scenario, we can, we can bound SH max given what we know about the frictional strength of, of the crust. So uh, it turns out that you know, we're going to learn failure models for rock, but what we'll see is that, you know, on the scale of the crust, there's always large fractures and fissures and stuff. And what governs the sort of what's called the frictional strength of the crust is associated with just the frictional coefficient between those, those rocks. So in, in what happens is, uh, as a good approximation, you can assume that the whole crust of the earth is sort of the, in this state, you know, at a large scale, is in this state of constant fracturing and sliding around. And so uh, the, the SH max, the maximum horizontal strength, can never exceed the frictional strength of the Earth. Because if, it, if, it, in some, if there's some mechanism that would force it to go above that, well, these fractures that are already there, this is going to activate and slide. Or possibly create new fractures. So that's how we bound SH max. We'll, we'll talk about that in more detail. Uh, the chapter of the book. And uh, also for observations from well bore failures. So we'll spend a good amount of time looking at wellbore stability. And what we'll learn is that in almost every well bore, there's some percentage of breakouts. So breakouts are, I think we, we looked at a, uh, we defined that, or uh, well, we looked at a picture of a breakout on the first day of class. Right. So we drill a hole in the earth. And that hole is circular, but at some point, once we get to a certain depth where the stresses exceed the strength of the rock, you'll always get some amount of breakouts, right? It turns out that these breakouts occur, well, uh, if we have a good enough model, right, if we have a good enough model, we can measure the size of those breakouts with a borehole measurement calipers, essentially. And we can then, from the size of those breakouts and our model, model meaning you know, physical model of the strength of uh, the stress state and the strength of the rock, we can then uh, sort of back out or back calculate what SH max would be to cause those size breakouts. So if we assume we know all of the stress state except for SH max, and we know when, and when the rock's going to fail, then we can use our model to sort of back calculate what SH max would be for that, that size of breakouts. 
size of breakouts that we measure. Okay, so we'll talk more about that in, in, uh, later on. And then, you know, the orientations of the principal stresses we can get from well bore observations, geology, earthquake, focal mechanisms. So, uh, you know, the best way is, is from well bore observations, right? So, the, typically uh, in a mini frac test, um, the, the fractures will initiate in a direction perpendicular to SH max, right? So, in the direction of SH min or S vertical. <clears throat> and likewise, the breakouts, like I've drawn them there, will occur in at the location of SH max, uh, SH min. Rather. So typically, this would be at SH min. So if we can use a televiewer or wellbore calipers, then we can infer the directions of the principal stresses. And then we use sort of a combination of all these things to reconstruct the total stress state, right? the, the magnitude of the principal stresses and the directions. And then from that, we can use that to solve mechanics problems. Some wellbore stability, that can help us with well planning, casing design, casing string design. Yeah. <clears throat>